we've all been there. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait. Have you talked to Juwan and, and how's he doing? Day by day, uh, progress is being made. You know, I, I made a statement with Sam and Ira last week, and I, and I would really like to get this out. I think that everybody out there pay attention to what Juwan did. He's a male, a 50-year-old male who, let's call it, you know, has an S on his chest in a lot of ways. And he was brave enough and smart enough to know he didn't feel right. And he asked for help. And he went to experts, and he followed through on that. That's a shining example to all males, right? Because we're all, you know, we're all smarter than the doctor. This will pass and that kind of thing. But if he was so smart in getting taken care of that, you know, he's going to come back better than he ever was. And uh, I, I told him, I called him last week. When I first visited with him, it was in my head and we got into some other stuff. Uh, and uh, I called him and thanked him because he really did do a service for a lot of people. If they pay attention, when you don't feel right, make sure you get to the experts because they're going to get you right. What has he said to you just about kind of um, steering the ship while in his absence? Well, I, I think because of our relationship, he doesn't have to say anything. You know, he just, he, he would say to me, you're, you're ready. And again, and it's not pandering in any way. When you have Saudi Washington and you have Howard Isley and Jay Smith all involved, what I really have to do is manage this. I don't have to run it. And um, and I know that he knew that going in. And uh, hopefully he's been comfortable with uh, how we're how we're. Um, how we're progressing and that's really what we're doing we're progressing each day with this group it's a very different group than the one you guys were on the court with <laughs> in the nit and against vanderbilt can you just kind of sum up the, the biggest differences and, and what you see as the biggest challenges going forward well the biggest difference is and that's probably not the right because it is new mm -hmm. uh, the strengths here are versatility we have guys that play multiple positions we have guys that have multiple skills. Uh, we're older. We're much older. I mean, really, last year, Kobe Bufkin was a freshman. Jet Howard was a freshman. Now you have Olivier Kumwa, who's played 120 college basketball games. Namari Burnett has played a lot of basketball games. Trey Jackson has played a lot of basketball games. Now you're adding them to the mix. Uh, you have a little bit different looking Terrence Williams. So it, it's a little bit older. Um, uh, a, a little bit more versatile type of team. Um, still quiet. We need to improve on that. We have to. We have to become uh, more vocal across the court, uh, across the, the board. Uh, but the players are the players are uh, responding really well. And um, look when you. When you have a guy and you could throw the ball in there and you know, okay, well, he's going to score 18. We don't have that. Um, but we have versatility. We have um, a competitive spirit. And we're making progress. And I, So I more look at it, this team, as opposed to this team compared to that team. Because it is. And maybe this is the way the college basketball is going to be. The idea of building a program you can have your baselines, but you're really building a team each year, and that's what we're doing. We're building a team for this year. Shelly, you mentioned the versatility. Minor, guess, what does that look like on offense and defense? I guess what will you be able to do differently this year? Well, I think that we will be able to. Uh, we'll switch a little bit more defensively. Uh, we will be able to uh, have a balanced offense. I mean, not that there was anything wrong with throwing the ball in and knowing you were going to get 20 a night. Uh, we're going to have to play balanced, and we are going to have to be a group that the whole is better than the individual parts. Because, and I'm not knocking anybody, but there's not two guys out there that are going to be first-round draft picks this year. So um, balance is going to be key. Balance at both ends of the floor. Balance when we get knocked down, right? Because we will get knocked down. Bound, getting getting ourselves up. So the versatility to me is that 
We have to be a threat from all spots of the floor, and we have to guard at each spot on the floor. Do you think it'd be a better defensive team this year? Yeah, uh, I think it has to. Uh, that has to come out in the, in the wash. Um, uh, the teaching is extraordinary. Saudi does a remarkable job with the defensive as the defensive coordinator. Um, and I think defensively, it matters on this: can we become better transition defensive team? Can we not foul? If we can, if we can become a better transition team and not foul, then we give ourselves a chance to be a better um, defensive team. I think the third thing there that really what we have to think about is we have to be a balanced uh, rebounding team. We, we, because we want to play at a pace, the only way you can play at a pace is to play uh, off of missed shots. Who have you seen step up on the defensive end and take on some leadership with that? Um, a work in progress uh, be, because one of the things if, ironically it was almost like you're in our staff meeting we just finished our staff meeting to plan today's practice if I was to say to you right now what's gnawing at me is our lack of communication defensively and so that that that's across the board that's not one guy that's not when you watch practice, the voice you're going to hear, you're going to hear Will Cheddar. Uh, uh, so you hear his voice. But you might leave here and say, I wonder if, you know, fill in the blank. I wonder if that guy was at practice. I didn't hear him. That, that has to change. That has to go across the board. We have to take our communication way up in order to become uh, – just let's start with being, let's become a good defensive team, start with communication. Bill, a perimeter shooting, yeah. perhaps a weakness last year. How's that going, and is there a go-to guy come to crunch time when you have a nail-biter type finish? Uh, another great question about crunch time. One of the things that we've dedicated ourselves to this year is that in a, every other practice, or two out of three days, we are doing um, situations. So we're putting ourselves in situations. Now, it wasn't f hard to find them. We had 17 games last year decided by six points or less. We were four and 13, okay? If we were, if we were 13 and four, there would be a banner, banner hanging up in there for you would make another NCAA appearance. So we've dedicated ourselves to those situations. And we're putting guys, do you have the courage to take a shot? Not make a shot, right? Everybody wants to take it, but you have to have courage in order to be willing to miss a shot. We're still working on that. But our, 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 I would say I am favorably impressed with our shooting numbers. And in, our, in those pressure situations that I talk about situationally, um, we're making shots. Namari Barnett is making a lot of shots. George Washington can make a lot of shots. Will Cheddar can make a lot of shots. Terrence Williams is shooting the ball really well. Um, we have to keep looking for that go-to guy, though, because he has to have the courage and the willingness to miss a shot. And as T. Will, you said he's improved remarkably from last year. Can you talk about that besides shooting? Well, it, there's a couple of things. This is my sense. I think when you get to your senior year in college, you can go one of two ways. You can go back to the wall. I'm going to go all out. I'm going to burn it out. I'm going to leave it. Right? Small percentage of guys do that. The larger percentage of guys say, been there, done that. Can you imagine I'm this close to a Michigan degree? I've played in the NCAA tournament, and they could coast. Um, what he did is he went home, and whoever he worked with changed his shooting for him, and he is a much more confident, willing, and able shooter uh, right now. We have to see how it kind of all fits together because it may not be from that small power forward. He might be a bigger small forward. Um, but he has, he has changed his form and dedicated himself to that, to that form. He has stayed consistent. Phil, so can, you, okay, can you get into the, that study you've done of those close games a little bit more? Kind of what, mm -hmm. is there a common theme you've Yeah, found? exactly. Yeah, that's perfect. That's a, and the answer is, there is no common theme. It's not like we were a bad pressure foul shooting team. It's not that we missed assignments defensively. 
it, it, it's across the board. And, and Juwan charged me with that last spring. Every, every coach got a certain assignment. So Juwan charged me that with that. And I looked at the film. I took the game, um, uh, the, the running game commentary, and I picked it out and said, okay, well, at this moment in time, we were up six or, you know. Now, now to be honest with you, there are some games, if you go back and watch the Vanderbilt game, there's no possible way you could lose that. None. Zero. Zero. You'd have to do 11 out of 10 things wrong. And we did 13 out of 10 things wrong at, at, at the end of that game. So it, it, it's not our foul shooting. Um, there a little bit of like not a rhythm shooting, like maybe fear of a missed shot. A little bit of a theme. Um, turnovers every once in a while. Uh, defensive plays. Maybe the biggest theme is in those moments when we looked out there, our guys would get in a silo. So you could say, okay, well, that guy, that guy, that guy, that they all play for Michigan, but they're not Michigan at that point, right? But now, could be because of nerves, could be because, like, some of the piling uh, on top of the players. Um, but there is – that's a great question. There is no one specific – Theme. In, a, in a way, is that perhaps more concerning? Like, if it was just not just free throw shooting, then you could work on that. If it's if there are multiple areas, I, I don't know that it's concerning. It, it is what it is, and and uh, it, it indicates to us as a staff, and and this this is was as early as June when we decided in practice we will do situational. Right? Like, I don't think – today it's at the end of practice, so I'll give you the example. Uh, today's situation, 117 left, we're down two, and I don't know the game. I, I decided to remove the name of the game. We were down two, we're on the foul line shooting two. We, we give them how many timeouts are left, we tell them how many team fouls we have, and then we play it. We don't interrupt it. We referee it. We, don't, we do not interrupt it. We play it out, and, and now – now we study it. Okay, well, how do we react? Okay, your team did it. Now Andrew's team is going to do it. And we have now this case study for saying, all right, do you understand? Like, here's one. Here's one. Down four with seven seconds left. Every player in America will do what? They, no, down four with the ball. Oh, sorry. Seven <laughs> seconds left. Every player in America will rush the ball to the three-point line and jump into the defense. Have you ever seen a call? No. So you know what the play is? The play is to take the ball out of bounds, throw it the length of the floor to a guy standing underneath the basket, have him catch it and lay it in. You're going to catch that ball. Why? The other team's being told not to foul. Now you lay the ball in. You're down two with six seconds left. Extend the game. So we're learning that, you know, because if, if, if we did just that, if we, did, if we went out there right now, we start practice, all right, seven seconds left, down four, what are you going to do? Everybody in our gym would throw the ball to the line to the floor, try and jump into the guy and go, ah, oh, I can't, he found me. Yeah, well, so who cares if he found you? All you're getting is three fast shots. There's still another possession to go in the game, and you've taken time trying to get a three. When the play is, throw the ball to the length of the floor, lay it in, and play six seconds left. So that's like how nuanced it's becoming so that against UNC Asheville, against, uh, against Youngstown State, if we're in that situation, we understand. What, what, how do I lengthen this game? And then you work your skills, pressure foul shooting, uh, competitive shooting, not just shooting, but competitive shooting, who's a winner, who's a loser, one-on-one. Um, -on -one because you, you want to be in a situation where you can stop the other team. So we're covering everything. And, and I don't think it's a concern. It's a fact. And, and we, we have dedicated ourselves to being better in situations. Do you believe coaching these veteran players, now that you do have an older team, as you talked about at the very beginning, that those situations become easier with a veteran team? No. I think they have to be done. I think they have to be done, and they have to be done, and they have to be done. And I will say this, success begets success. 
So we have to have them in practice, win those situations, if whatever team they're on. Um, we have to become, it has to become almost second nature. Because no matter what, we could have the greatest practices in the world. We can't, we can't build to like a, what's it going to feel like 11 seconds left in Madison Square Garden against St. John? We can't. And you, you could be older. Older's not always better. Older is just older. And um, what our responsibility in practice is to put them in so that it becomes somewhat of a second nature. <laughs> Thanks. Get back to the defense for a second, Phil. The, the lack, the relative lack of communication. Is this a product of you having to kind of build a new team like in a year like this? Um, I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't believe that. Hopefully, uh, for whatever the reason, and and you know, I'm not the old guy. You know, get off my lawn type of guy. But but. It just seemed to me that that when you played before, part, talking, not just trash talking, but like talking the game was almost second nature. It's not anymore. It's, it's not anymore. And, and we have to uh, insist upon it. And in fact, we just added a drill for we're off tomorrow. So with, today's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday's practice. We're going to add one where where we're actually going to have nobody on the sideline talk. No coach is going to talk. No manager is going to talk. The players on the floor are going to have to talk their way through situations. So it, it's, it has to be insisted upon, and it has, to be, it has to be taught. And then when we come back the next day, it has to be insisted. We have to keep going. So you think it's uh, not so much getting new guys every year. It's just a larger issue. I think it's a larger issue. High school. I think it's just. I, I think. I'm not knocking. Like they they play a lot of basketball, but in order to talk, you have to um, you have to uh, you have to be trained to do that. Right. And I think that one of the one of the things. And again, like this isn't. I, I've now brought up this idea of see something, say something. You know, if that's if that's if that's a big deal in our society, then it's going to be a big deal in this court. Say what you see. Just say what you see, and it'll help us. Where have you seen growth from Doug? And how close is Jalen to being that number two guy? Is he getting there? Well, Jalen is is day by day. It, it's um, he has a lot of energy. You know, I can only describe one play the other day where. He went down the floor, three on zero, and he and he he left hand dunked. So that that was a real strike. But if you said to me, will he bang into somebody? That, no, no, he he doesn't bang into anybody yet. Uh, the next step is going to be when he can get into some live action. Um, but certainly, uh, progress and commitment to improving is a really big deal with that injury. Same thing as a senior. Well, look, I'm, I'm banged up. And really, his surgery was in January, so this is the 10th month. And if you look at those ACLs, this is about the time. And again, there's no benchmark. I'm not giving a date. Um, we, we are anxious for him. With Doug, I would say uh, shooting. He's shooting the ball uh, more confidently. And he's making shots at a higher he's rate. He's uh, uh, needs to needs to uh, continue to grow in terms of uh, care of the ball. Uh, and the other thing that he's doing very well is he's defending the ball uh, aggressively. And because he's defending the ball aggressively, a kid like George Washington's improving. Lamari Barnett, his ball skills are improving because Doug is committed as a good teammate to helping his teammate improve. You talked about um, the key of communication. What have you seen from Doug specifically, you know, returning starter from him in terms of leadership and communication? I know he's only a sophomore, but, you know, definitely is seen as a leader. Yeah, that's a great question because the last couple days I've noticed him, like, pulling guys by the shirt and then having something, something to say. I don't know that I saw that in the summer or if I saw that last year at all. Um, so... He, he doesn't see himself as a sophomore, and I think that's a good thing. And he does see himself as a returning starter. And now his goal is to, to get into that 
elite conversation point guards in this league. Um, he he's a different he is a different guy. I mean, not physically, but he is uh, not a freshman anymore. And last year there were a lot of times he was a freshman. Sorry about that. No. Also not a freshman now. Terrace Reed Jr. Oh. I'm surprised we made it this long without mentioning his work. Yeah. Um, I, I, first of all, the the blessing that that young man has because of being in the lab with Juwan in the summer, and now Jay Smith, uh, and Jay's approach, uh, Terrace Reed to me, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, a lot of people around here are way too superstitious for me, but um, he's a better foul shooter. <laughs> now he hasn't done it with the bright lights and crowd and all, but he is shooting the, he's shooting the ball better from the foul line. He's a more confident face-up shooter. Uh, left hand has really developed. And over the last four or five days, there's been a growth. Earlier in the practices, he was, um, he was getting banged and not finishing his layups. Now he's playing through that. He's got that, he has really good feet for a guy. His size belies his feet. Uh, but uh, last couple days started to get back into shot blocking. Um, he, he's, he's made a, he's made a real, he's made real strides. And again, it's that it, we have the cheat sheet. You have Juwan Howard, right? And now you have uh, Jay Smith working at that position. So, Tyrus Reed is markedly improved, and, but you have to see it. You, know, you just can't talk about it or practices look great and whatever today's day is, but uh, I'm confident in him. I imagine some of that maybe is on defense and that switching. You yeah, his defense is good. His, his, de his, his, his defense was good last year, and uh, his defense this year has um, stayed at that level. And again, with the teaching that Saudi puts in, the scheme, the pattern, um, it, it befits his abilities at this point. How can Trey help you? Trey's a really, really, really good shooter, and he has that walk. He has that left-handed walk. You know, like I don't know what it is about them, but their shoulders dip differently. They they carry themselves differently. Um, he goes back to that versatility. I mean, when you talk to Trey, he's going to tell you he played backup center in the Big East last year. Um, he is, um, I think he's getting more comfortable in his own skin, which is a good thing for us. And I go back with that versatility with him. So how are you going to guard him? Could he play, could he play on the wing? He has a shooting ability to play on the wing. Could he play as a thin power forward? Yeah, he, he could. He, he could. And um, what I like about him is that his growth. He is a quieter guy, um, but you see a growth. And I uh, am impressed with his uh, willingness to trust. Uh, I, don't, I don't. Sometimes when these guys transfer, they come into a new situation, maybe they don't trust, they, they transfer because, well, I'm going to look for something different, but they don't know that they are in something different until they, they let themselves go and be trusted. Phil, has Juwan been in communication with the guys? Or do you anticipate that will be something that can happen? He, he, does, he has been in communication uh, with them via text. Um, and he watches every practice. I, I know that uh, for a fact. And um, the players are really, really, uh, they care. I think that's a good that's a good sign. But if you watch us practice, it's not like everybody's going, oh man, he's not. No, we we get everything we can out of them in, in a practice session. Um, and his communication with them was his is his greatest strength anyway. Like he can get down it where it's just him and it could be a group text, but when you read his group text, you say he's talking to this guy in particular, and that's the way they take it. You've been in the